so you're just back, you look a bit bedraggled. It's yeah. a bit windy eyed, isn't it? We're not going out. <laughs> so it means that I'm gonna have to earn some money. <laughs> I prefer sailing, but you know. There are days for sailing and days for staying in. Yeah, so Beverly's gonna make videos and I'm gonna try and earn some money, but what the heck, that's what you have to do. Sounds a bit loud outside, doesn't it? Hmm? Sounds a bit loud outside. It does. But if you're not videoing me. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm watching trash, I should be working. No, you're 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 helping produce video. No, I'm not watching trash. No, you're helping produce video. Talk to the camera. I don't want to. I wanna just chill. Taking a chill pill. <laughs> but it does sound atrocious out there. It does. Well, you haven't quite got to grips with this, have you? No, I've just realised that Beverly and I hardly ever sail downwind. <gasps> oh, dear, so I don't think I've got everything right. Um, I did have the Genoa out, so we only had our um, mainsail on a third reef so that it's not blanking. But I'm still not too sure if that's okay. But no we hardly ever sail downwind um close hauling oh we're pretty much i'm happy on our close haul this is a close haul kind of boat isn't it <laughs> it is as far as we're concerned we clearly need a bit more draining on the downwind legs but we'll get there that's the thing we're training ourselves so you know, we're doing things as and when we get there. Doesn't help that it's quite swelly today. It's very swelly. I've got a couple of white caps and all sorts of stuff, but it's just swelly. I've got the preventer on because you have to, because it's otherwise the boom will be coming across like yo yo. But yeah, it's just. I need more practice on this downwind lock. It's very strange. It's an odd experience, and the motion of the boat's peculiar too. Yeah, well. Just the way it is. You can always try not underneading was slamming into the waves of close hold and Yeah, but we've been wanting to go. When we came up um, this way before, the one thing we really regretted missing is castle logs. Castle logs! Otherwise known as Castle Stalker. Because Beverly is a big uh, Monty Python girl. She loves a Monty Python. So we're gonna go up there and we're gonna see it because why not? In this little passage that we're doing um, up to Port Appen um, for various reasons. One reason is yes we're sailing and we're sailing things that we don't normally do. I always like to try and learn things uh, as, as we're sailing so I'm learning <laughs> how to organise my sails but there you go. Um, so I'm learning 
I'm going into uncharted territory. I know it's charted. There is pilotage galore, but as far as I'm concerned, I've never been here. So it's just like it's just brilliant. Seeing are someone are you sailing new. into parts uncharted on your personal chart? Yes, on my personal chart, it is parts uncharted because I've never been here before, and I'm seeing things which are different, and I love that. That's part of my our adventure. Yes, lots of other people have seen it, but I've not seen it. So it's just ooh, excited. How many times have we jibed the boat today? Oh, five. <laughs> but yeah, and um, we're getting our jibing practice in. <laughs> so <laughs> ironically, we put a jibe preventer up, and we're having to jibe. Yeah, well. But you have to, it's just the way it is. But yes, we've done about five jibes, so don't normally jibe, don't normally go downwind, all that sort of stuff. Lots of things I don't normally do, and that's what I love. Bebby, in our quest to learn something new every day, what have we learned today? <laughs> well, we're in Linny Marina and um, we've discovered their rather unique cleat mechanism. They don't have cleats down on deck level, uh, like you'd expect, the little linear ones that we all know and love. Um, they've got these poles that sit up with like a, a cleat thing and a... Uh, it's like a bollard that's sideways and a cleat. It looks like this. And you put your rope around it and it's just a bit odd. Um, imagine if you make getting off the boat a bit hazardous. <laughs> you step in the wrong place, by God, you'll know about it. But, um, yeah, I've just never quite seen anything like it. I'm not sure I ever will again. But it's a nice little marina. We've had a great time. We've walked around a bit. We've looked at it. It's got a huge mirroring field. The, the most off-putting thing was coming in last night and not being able to see where the pontoon was. There were so many boats and they were all sitting with the tide running in a particular direction. I couldn't actually figure out where the actual pontoon was. So we just took a mirroring bow and we sorted it all out this morning and we're on the pontoons now. Well, we actually came to Linny Marine, uh, which has got 80 mooring balls. So one or two mooring balls that you can pick up. Um, but it's the same price depending on, regardless of if you're on the pontoon or on a mooring ball but there's no electric and that's why it's the same price but um, we've got on the pontoon just so that we can go off for a walk. It's a great wee shower block. It is a great wee shower block and um, it's clean, it's tidy and there's plenty of space. I always appreciate lots of space when I'm showering. Um, trotted in something horrible. I name you Dungfoot. Fair enough. However, Dungfoot, I need knights for my quest for the Holy Grail. Kneel, Dungfoot. Do I have to? I dub thee Sir Poopalot. Rise, Sir Poopalot. So hard! So Bev, are you in your happy place? <laughs> I'm in a steering place where I've got uh, 20 knots of wind, where I've got full sails up, we're doing 6.4 knots close hauled. Um, we're leaning over about 15 degrees. Uh, there's a big valley off to the uh, west of us and I think that's where all this wind's coming from. There's rain up ahead of us. 
But, you know, we're clipping along, so... Whoa! Whoa. Right. Not well, that full sail didn't last long. No, we were a bit overpressed there, weren't we? It was very exciting for a few minutes, but too exciting to be honest. So we're now <laughs> got a reef in the Jenny and a reef in the main. And we're getting along at just under five knots, which I'm happy with. You know, um, the boat's at a nice angle, we're comfortable, we're moving the way we want to go. There are no pots in front of us and a couple of teas on the way. I mean, <laughs> it's proper sail, I'm happy. Yeah, but it's the old thing, you know, you just looking at it, you're thinking 20 knots of wind with full sail up. Maybe we should put in a reef in and nature then goes, yeah, you should, shouldn't you? BAM! So that was it. We wound up having to put a reef in and we did. I have to say, I'm glad we practiced uh, in Belfast Lock the heave to method. Oh, totally. We just heaved the boat to it and then we had all the time in the world with just one small exception. This boat does not heave to under a full jenny in 20 knots of wind. It has to have at least one reef in the jenny. But as soon as we put that reef in, heave to was perfect. Of, uh, a week ago I was uh, on the clipper boat and they were going on about you know five sail changes in a day and I was thinking gosh that's a lot Beverly and I have <laughs> not even done two hours today <laughs> and we have done five sail changes we haven't changed the sail but we've certainly changed the configuration we've had two reefs no reefs an hour away <laughs> regardless we're getting better at this sailing lot that's for certain but um, we're just um, near the bottom of Liss Mall and we were considering uh, an anchorage just at the bottom of uh, Liss Mall what that would mean is we anchored then about six o'clock uh, the tide goes in our favour up um, the Isle of Mull um, so we would have done that um, but what we've decided at the moment is to carry on sailing. Um, we will have foul tide against us, but um, uh, we'll be by the time we get there, we'll be in the two twelfths section of the tide. So although the tide will be foul against us, it won't be that strong, uh, and um, we can always go into Loch Aileen and anchor there. So we're just keeping an eye on a pot but we're easily going to pass that. For this wind direction, Loch Eileen should be well sheltered. It should be. Uh, we've had some really crazy weather, uh, purely because um, where the uh, land is really high, we've had no wind whatsoever, but then it comes down to the valleys and uh, we're getting 20, 20 knots of wind, so it's cheating and... We had 28 knots at one point. Yeah, but like I say, I was complaining, oops, and we got to do another change of sails again, just in case we were Time worried. to trim them again. Yeah. Oh, we didn't sort it itself out. Yeah, nearly another trim. No, 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 no. yes, We've no, got to trim yes, them no. again. <laughs> Let's go trim those sails. loving our tacking at the moment um, but we I'm getting the heebie-jeebies because we're going in quite close but we were 300 meters offshore and yet we were still in 100 meters of depth so I was worried I have no idea I mean so I've been in the River Mersey and we've tacked a lot closer than that I can tell you now 
Yeah, well, the wind's picking up as we reach the headland. Mm, uh, yeah. So I guess it's all hands of the pumps or whatever they say. It certainly is. <laughs>